Hello. Here we have two super little radios from Retivis, the RB615. This radio comes in two versions from the factory, one for the UK stroke EU market on PMR446 at half a watt and 16 channels, and the other variant intended for the US market as an FRS radio with 22 channels and 2 watts output power. It has a micro USB for charging and limited programming, it also has an earpiece mic socket and a Vox feature that is both adjustable and can be switched off. Overall the radio feels very well made, not cheap at all and feels nice in the hand as it is so light. The screen is easy to read and navigate and the alert sounds are very loud. No chance you'll miss this honestly. Initially out of the box the radios will not switch on. As you can see here the batteries are sealed within a bag and have to be removed to enable the radio to operate. Unlike the KDC1, this radio has a Nokia style BL5C type battery making it cheap and easy to replace and will keep a spare for those long days out with the kids. It simply pushes into place like an old mobile phone and the rear plastic case slips back on it secured by sliding the locking clip at the bottom. The radio beep tone is very loud at first. This is the first thing that I recommend that you switch off in the menu along with the voice enunciation as well. I could not see any way of turning down the volume of the beep so I simply disabled it. This is a radio that is similar in so many ways to the popular KDC1 radio. And if you're looking to put this thing in your shirt pocket, you're going to hardly notice the weight. It's marginally smaller than the KDC1, uh, but nonetheless still packs a similar punch out in the field which you'll see a little bit later on. Here is how they compare on weight. It's hardly noticeable in a shirt pocket. Micro USB for charging. Looking at the sides of the radio, I would also say that there is a drop in charge base also available if you needed one. The radio comes with a rotating belt clip and a lanyard. When plugged into charge, the red light comes on and is extinguished when it's charged. I would have preferred to have seen the light lit green though. I must also add that it is possible to operate the radio when it's charging, including transmitting so it should be possible to power this from a USB power bank if you're going on a really long run or a long run time is required. The radio volume is controlled by the up and down buttons on the front. Pressing the menu button enables the channel to be changed and pressing the PTT button confirms the change. The radio manual is actually quite decent and is printed in most European languages, although it's a pretty easy radio to get your head around if it hasn't got your particular language. To program another radio, the first radio, the donor radio, must be switched on with the up arrow being held down. It then enters data transmit mode. Then the receiving radio must be switched on with the down arrow depressed, putting it into receive mode. Multiple radios can be programmed this way with the donor radio left switched in this mode. There are two caveats however. This only sends over data for one channel. If you want to send data for another channel, you need to change the donor radio channel to that channel and do it 16 times. Also, this doesn't clone any setting either, like the beep or the voice enunciator. The vibration feature works really well. It buzzes three times initially and then doesn't buzz during and over. It resets. It's also seen to work with another radio of a different brand, so it's a very useful feature indeed. If you are buying this radio and you're in the States, go for the FRS version. If you're in the UK, don't be tempted to get the FRS version just because it's more powerful and has a few more channels. The basic PMR set sold in the UK is very good as you will see later. You will also not be able to change the transmit frequencies so will be transmitting illegally should you do so. Here is a relative field strength demo and while not wholly scientific you can see as a guide that the KDC1 looks to be roughly twice as powerful in terms of radiated power at this distance. Something that you will see in the field test later on in the video. Because I have no way of changing the frequency I need to do the test locally on PMR446. However I have had noise here and I've had this for a while if your viewers have been watching the channel. I thought at first it was a house near to me, so I designed and 3D printed a very good tape measure Yagi and tuned it for maximum gain front and back ratio, making it super directional. 
Using the SDR play unit and reducing the gain, I managed to narrow it down to my house. <laughs> and using the Ubiteria scanner, I walked around the house and quickly tracked down the culprit. It's my NVIDIA graphics card inside my PC. I've tried a number of leads and suppressors, but it's still doing it. Very odd. So I will be using the SDR on a laptop for this test and we'll work on how to fix the issue with the PC and I'll update you guys how I fix that at a later date. Right, let's go to site. Right, uh, I come out to site to test some little radios. Um, it's really, really windy again. It's supposed to be June and um, it's really burning gale out there. So uh, I don't know how well this is going to come out. We've got the laptop back home now. Um, I was even getting interference from the HDMI cables from my CCTV NVR as well. So it's something to watch for. If you've got, um, if you're having problems with a little bit of interference, just check your what happens when you switch your monitors off and shut down your PCs. Um, I didn't realise these graphics cards, modern graphics cards, were so noisy. So uh, something to watch out for. Anyway, so we're using the, the laptop now. We shouldn't have any problems. Um, we're on channel eight on PMR. So uh, we've brought a couple of radios out. We bought the early Wiz and the WLN KDC one, which is obviously a very similar radio in a similar sort of bracket. So um, we shall try from this location and go to the other location, but I'm not so sure how well we're going to do. This is ridiculously windy now, but we'll try. Testing the Retivis RT or RB615 at location A, approximately three miles. Our RB615 at location A. Approximately three miles, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The foot brown box jumps over the lazy dog. Really windy again. Testing the WLN KDC one on location A, approximately three miles, one, two, three, four, five. Location A, approximately three miles, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Oh, the wind. Testing the Oli Wiz, the Oli Wiz at location A, approximately three miles. Location A, approximately three miles. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, it's so windy out there. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's June. What's going on? Anyway, um, I don't know how that went. I imagine the... The two other radios, apart from the little PMR set, did okay. I imagine this probably did struggle from this location to get back. But we've quietened things down at home in terms of local interference, hopefully. So um, we should we shall uh, we shall check the recording and see what it comes out like. But well, you'd have already seen it at this point, of course. Right. So let's go to the second location and do some tests. All right, I'm at the location B, I'm not facing my usual direction because somebody has unusually parked here alongside me. Uh, that's not a problem, I shan't be here for too long. Uh, we're getting to that time of year where you never know the old farmers might want to get in the fields. I don't like obstructing them when they're on their business. So we'll be as quick as we can be here. Um, so it's still windy as hell up here and I'm not sure how we're going to do back to base. I don't think it's going to rain, but it's going to be windy. So anyway, let's waffle, let's get out there and try it. Right, we're testing the Retivis RB615 at location B, approximately 7 miles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. In the Retivis RB615 at location B, approximately 7 miles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4. 3, 2, 1, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Checking the only wears, the only wears, uh, Checking the only wears, the only wears, uh, location B, approximately 7 miles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. WLN KDC1. We're testing the WLN KDC1, location B, approximately 7 miles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, location B, approximately 7 miles, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, I think that was a successful test. Um, the RB615, fantastic little radio. I've got to say, really impressed with this. Um, very, very nicely made, super lightweight. You can literally just pop it in the old top pocket. You'd hardly know it's there. Um, seems to have really good uh, standby time as well. Uh, excellent vibration feature. That's something I really, really like. Um, the, by default, the, the, the beep, I'd definitely turn that off. I couldn't see any way of, of actually making that quieter, so just switch it off. Same with the voice announcements. You don't need the voice announcements. You know what you're doing with these things, very simple. But you can switch it off, that's the nice thing. Um, 
The clone feature, which is something that they've um, championed about this radio, it's not really that useful um, because, you you know, as I've already explained in the video, you have to, it only clones the current channel that you're on, not all of the channels. It might be useful out in the field, but, you know, possibly, I'm not sure, but uh, if you can remember how to do it, that is. But um, I think if you've got a number of these and you want to, and you don't want to be pressing the menu buttons and going in and out, just get the programming cable. It's so cheap. I think it's about five pounds. Uh, just get the programming cable and that way you can clone them with your PC. It's a much easier way of doing it. But the remote clone feature may, may well be useful. So it's something I thought worth mentioning. Um, other things that I like about this um, is the fact that it takes a standard Nokia battery, much like the KDC1. Um, the KDC1 also takes the same sort of battery, which means, uh, you, you, you know, these batteries are going to be available forever, basically. You're not going to be stuck with radios with a proprietary battery that you can't replace in at any time in the future. So if you're buying a number of these radios, that's something I think is probably worth thinking about. It's a good thing because some of these other radios, they may, you may not be able to get batteries for them in the future. So, um, summing up, I think if you're in the market for some PMR radios, I think you could do go a lot worse than to buy these. Um, you cannot program them onto anything other than the PMR frequencies, which I know for many people uh, they'll be very pleased about. Uh, I think the range, I think we've proven from here, is very good for PMR radios. Um, they seem to be running at roughly half the power of the KDC-1, and the KDC-1, I'm pretty sure, puts out about a watt. So I wouldn't be surprised if these were running genuinely at the UK limit uh, off the antenna of 0.5 watts right i think i've covered just about everything on the video now so i'm going to go home and uh have a drink and put my feet up i think getting on a bit these days i've got a big birthday tomorrow so i better get my head down right if you have been thanks ever so much for watching we'll catch you on the next one take care